Without further ado, uh, the theme today is our shared future. And I'd like to give you my perspective. Why this is important is, see for me, I think our shared future is the Pakistan of tomorrow. It's what this country will look like. It's the country we leave to our kids. It's the country that our generation will shape. And I'm here to tell you that this future can look different, that it can actually be a very bright, progressive, aspirational tomorrow. But that will be the case if many of you choose to make it so. My name is Temur Jagla. I'm a politician. And I'm, is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> and I happen to be the finance minister of Pukhtunkhwa, that small province up north. I was a partner at McKinsey, the leading consulting firm. I resigned two years ago to enter a very different field. And I'd like to tell you my perspective through six stories connected to six themes. And I hope that those stories will give you a reflection a little bit on how politics and government works. I hope they will give you a bit of a reflection on the fact that it is possible for change to happen in Pakistan. And I hope that they will make some of you think about how to contribute to that change. The story begins with risk. I think that if we, if we actually want to shape a different future, if we actually want to be agents of change that build a different tomorrow, then the one thing that we've got to accept is risk. The bigger the change that you want, the bigger the improvement that you want, the greater the risk that you've got to be able to accept. And for me, nothing, nothing encapsulates that better than the story of my entry into politics, which can pretty much be encapsulated by this picture here, which is my first meeting with Imran Khan. Now they say pictures tell a story, this picture does not tell a story. Because this picture was never meant to be. You see, when I chose to enter politics, I decided that I had to make a plan on how to make this happen seamlessly. I somehow managed to wangle a meeting with Imran Khan, but I requested that the meeting be off the record because I planned that I'm going to do continue my career all the way to close to election and then only jump from my corporate career at the last minute. They acceded to my request for an off the record meeting and I took this seriously, so I drove myself, I took my father with me, you see him in the picture, um, and, and we went to Banigala. In fact, I think I actually fooled the security over there because when I dropped my father, they said, driver, gari bai. <laughs> so I said, I'm not the driver, I'm actually the candidate, I have to go attend the meeting, went inside. Five minutes into this meeting, a photographer comes and he takes a few pictures, one of them, this one over here that you see behind. And I don't even know when the picture is on Imran Khan's Facebook page before the meeting is over. When I get out, I've got 500 missed calls. My cousin calls me from Australia saying, you've resigned and joined PTI. And the phone doesn't stop ringing for the next. Five days. Anyway, so much for that. That was my last formal day at McKinsey. I resigned. Uh, all the plans thrown in the dustbin. And the next nine months to election were not some of the most challenging, but the most challenging time of my life. From one point to another, every plan that I would make would fail. When my entry into politics became public in Peshawar, I think too many people weren't happy about a relatively smart person entering politics. I faced a lot of resistance in the party. So I had another plan. Uh, I knew Tangi Tareen, I was going to join the party through him. He committed to me 
that the day I left Dubai where I was living and joined and, and came to Pakistan, it formally get me to enter the party. The day I landed in Pakistan was the day Jangir Tareen was disqualified by the Supreme Court. <laughs> I threw myself into campaigning for the next six months in my ancestral constituency in rural Peshawar, tried to get legitimacy, uh, tried to get acceptance, tried to show that I could actually be a street smart politician of the people to try and get a ticket. I got that ticket six months later, 30 days before the election, for a constituency the other side of Peshawar where no one knew me. <laughs> so anyway, um, election happened, uh, and I actually can proudly say that I won by a record margin. But perhaps the reason I'm standing here today is that in that journey, I realized that the price of potentially succeeding was to take the risk that came along with it and a very real probability of failure. If you want to be a change agent, you have to accept the fact that you can fail and that a risk is going to be part of that journey. Let's move on to the second story. I became a minister. One of my first meetings was with the Revenue Authority. The Revenue Authority gave me this comprehensive presentation. And for those not so technical, their job is to collect money for the government. They told me everything. They told me about their act, the law, how many people they trained, their organization chart. But then 20 minutes in, I asked them, do you realize you've been talking to the finance minister as the revenue authority, and you still haven't told me how much money you make, which is your job. You've told me everything else. And so from that day, changing the revenue collection culture in the province became a priority. It became an ambition. And today, 16 months later, the KP Revenue Authority, for the first time in history, has displayed 40% year-on-year growth every month. And such sustained growth has never happened before. Why has it happened? Why has it happened? Because we actually aimed high and set an aspiration that was beyond what the everyday person thought was possible. Third story about being bold, about dreaming aspirationally. When we looked at the economy of the province, we actually realized that we wanted to, now that security had returned to the province, promote trade. We picked up another big thing to do, which was to open the Torham border with Afghanistan 24-7. It was shocking to me to see that the border actually only remained closed, uh, remained closed 12 hours plus a day. How could we actually increase trade with Afghanistan or Central Asia if the route literally for trade was not open? So we requested a meeting on this. We requested it in Islamabad. We got the Prime Minister's support and we said, this is something we want to do. Now, a lot of people over there said, this is not possible. This is not going to happen. Uh, this is something that is not needed because there's no demand. Again, we chose to be bold, we chose to think different, and we said not only are we going to do it, we're going to do it in six months. That was January 30th, September 3rd, six months and three days, the border was open 24-7, and the volume of cargo passing through it increased more than 50% overnight. So much for those who believed that there was not going to be any change. Innovate. Again, if you're a change agent and anyone, and we're going to have speakers from the private sector here, and they're going to tell you that innovation is a key part of how to build big private sector companies. Why not the same for government of our countries? Today, as a part of my office, I have a team of nine of the most talented people that you'll see in government that we were able to recruit because we chose to envision how government picks up people differently. We didn't look at the number of years of experience on their CV. We didn't look at, we didn't give them marks for the number of degrees that we had. We chose to interview them at length after screening 600 plus CVs. 
And the panel said it interviewed them the way any top tier company would. My colleagues from the civil service who are part of the panel liked that so much that they actually said, let's institutionalize this process. And what they also told me funnily was that they'd actually never done interviews like this before when they were selecting people for government. So, so I asked why. And they said, you know, we give so many marks for what degree they have and how many years of experience they have and what exam they've passed, that by the time they actually want to judge a person for how good he is, there's only five or ten marks left. So I said, what do you do with that? We asked them when Kaide Azam was born, or when the third battle of Panipat happened. So I bit my lip and took a deep sigh, which I often do in government, uh, but increased my own resolve to say, I'm going to do more of this. The last two points, and I think they're perhaps the most important, detail. You've noticed everything else is a verb, this is not even a verb. But that's because I think that when you're actually trying to make change happen, it's not enough just to give a vision. You have to get in the detail. And this is even more important in government, because that's where things fail. They say the devil is in the detail. I think the devil is really if you don't actually get to work on the detail, because I promise you nothing will happen. I came in, we presented a budget, and I saw that as we were going from one term to another, our spending envelope had increased so much that we had actually committed money to spend for the next seven years. Now that got me scratching my head because we only have a five-year term. And if I've allocated everything for the next seven years, literally have nothing to spend, it was very, very clear to me. We actually had to look at our commitments on our development budget and cut what wasn't necessary. So I went to the administration and I said, this is what we have to do. They said, great, this is not your job. We'll tell the departments, we'll present you a plan, and we shall do it. So a month later, they say, we've asked the departments, and they say, everything they're spending is very important. There's no savings possible. They said, fine. We've tried it your way. Now we're going to try it my way. So we sat down individually sat down, looked at something like 1,500 lines of budget and started cutting it line by line where it was not necessary. You know how much money we found and actually were able to save? 203 billion rupees. That was almost 40% of the money that we'd actually spent the previous year. And that money will be reinvested in Portunhua, in more important places over the next three or four years. And it's because, as a change agent, I chose to get into the detail and get my hands dirty. Six story, I won't even bother the six story, you will start to see the pattern. You keep on hearing the word impossible. You actually need to realize that the difference between impossible and possible is perseverance. Each of these stories required perseverance. And I think that really is the moral over here. That it's not that Pakistan can't change. It's that we need the people who can make a difference to believe that it can, to try, to, to give the attention to detail that is required, to persevere, and realize that that journey will still be difficult. I hope that I've given you food for thought, but I promise you that if we put our mind to it, this country will change and it will change for the better. Thank you very much.